It's Rock 100.5, Bailey and Southside, Tiger King has been our escape from this coronavirus. If it weren't for the Tiger King, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, then we'd all be going crazy. So uh, we have the opportunity to talk to one of the stars of Tiger King uh, with a different look. Uh, that's John Finley. And John, uh, you got the beard. I saw you on the episode eight with Joe McHale. You got teeth now. What made you go through the drastic changes of look? Um, you know, when I got with my fiance, uh, before we even talked about getting married, I was like, I got to get my teeth fixed. And she's like, okay. Well, the, the next week I had a dentist appointment and they were getting yanked out. Speaking of that, you know, with, with the teeth, which is great, but you know, the fact you said fiance, the one thing I picked up during this is that you are not a gay man. I assume your fiance is a woman. You were, why were you with Tiger King? You got to tell me because you're straight. Uh, that, huh? Fluidity. What'd you say? <laughs> Fluidity. Uh, is, that your, is that your fiance with you right now? Yes. Yeah, she's, she's telling you, don't answer that. But I mean, it's a great question Steve asked because we all want to know it. Like we saw, you know, we saw you on the docu series on Netflix, and then when you said like I'm not gay, uh, I know my mind went to the first thing I thought of was God, this Joe Exotic man, he is the master manipulator. If he's able to take a straight guy and make him gay, drugs or no gay, uh, drugs or no drugs, do that guy has got a pull on people. What was it about Joe Exotic that? made people do what he wanted them to do. You know, I don't even know really how to answer that question. It's just, he, most of us were there for the animals and we were doing everything for the animals. It wasn't that we were doing it for him. If something had to be done for the animals, we did it. For him, it was something just his way of controlling I mean he did it with everybody he either broke you down or he did something to get what he wanted was it ever John would you say was it drugs because I think it was drugs it was meth with his other husband again uh, you know going back to it that's just what we saw you know at home watching this and you're right I think you've got to be blown away with how many people have watched this. You have to be blown away with the fame that all of a sudden that you have. I mean, I mean, you do. This was the perfect storm. Uh, this pandemic came at a time, you know, where this thing was coming out. And we interviewed Joe, you know, four years ago on this show, Bailey and Southside, about running for president. And it was just a a crazy guy running for president, you know, a fun guy. Why, why not? Hell, people looked at Trump the same way at one point in time. But uh, one thing that I, I caught in watching this was the fact that he had a pull on you and he had a pull on uh, his other husband, a, a younger guy, guy, you know, West Coast. But you could tell with him it was drugs. Was it drugs with you or just the animals? Um, in the beginning, it was animals and then – a while after it was drugs and then when i left in 2014 for six months when i got with my baby's mama then he didn't really have a pull on me with the drugs but it was again with the animals what is this uh this docuseries done for your life i mean I, again i saw the uh episode eight with joel McHale on sunday and everyone's lives have changed, obviously. I mean, I'm assuming you wouldn't have had an attorney or probably a press person and stuff before this. So good and bad, what has this done for you, John? You know, I mean, it's been an overnight sensation. I've been propelled into fame just overnight. And it's, it's not really changed my life at all. I mean, I still work 
every day. Uh, I still do everything I normally do, but it's, it's most of my day is taken up with interviews and radio or cameos. Oh, what yeah. kind of cameos are you? What kind of cameos you've been asked to do? Uh, you know, birthday cameos are one of the biggest. Um, Shout outs to the frontline heroes of this pandemic. Uh, a lot of shout outs to companies to give them a uplifting message or it's just, they've all been fun and some of them have been really serious, but we just, they're really fun to do. I mean, if y'all ever get the chance to do it, you need to do it. Oh, we we do it, especially Steve, every morning. He loves I, to do his shout outs. I, I definitely do. I you know, I guess it is kind of weird. People have come up going, Hey, can you leave a message, you know, on my phone and be my answering service or something like that? So yeah, there are silly things that we've done. Nothing to the level that you're doing. Um, you know, another thing, you know, because it's kind of cool having you on because out of everyone, we kind of thought that you were the most unique, the most real. It's like, you know, you kind of knew what was going on um, and you were like early into it. When was everything filmed? That's a question I have. Like, what was the period of time that this entire thing was put together, the span? Uh, as far as the producers filming, I don't actually know when it started. Uh, I started filming with them in 2018. Were you promised uh, payment? uh when they started filming or even before that with the reality show uh no not really i mean they bought pictures and videos from me but that was about it so he, was, you, probably gonna, he was probably gonna screw you over on that too huh uh from what i hear a lot of people got screwed over yeah, because yeah, it's kind of weird because you guys were pretty honest, you know, and the amount of information you would have thought that there was a back end deal. If it became something, you know, then everybody would would get paid. Um, you know, you were pretty straight up and pretty honest. Um, what do you think with the other? And again, I know your fiance is there, but I've, I've got to go with what I saw, knowing that you were a husband, one the first and there was a second husband that you were OK with your words. Uh, when he killed himself, accident or on purpose? Uh, that was total accident. I mean, I taught him how gun safety worked and how to actually handle a gun. I never told him that you should hold a gun to your head and do that. But when you read something on the internet, I mean, it you would believe it's normally true, but and something like that, you don't play around. You know, John, you, you made it obviously very clear with us and all the other shows that you've done that Joe Exotic, the docuseries on Netflix, uh, you know, the good, bad, and the ugly with Joe and everything that went along, especially the big cats. But I said on the air uh, the other day, I'm like, you know, even if you hate the guy, you got to thank him for what he's given to you right now. Uh, because you are getting this this fame and this possibly new career. Do you think like that? You're like, as much of an ass jack as Joe Exotic is and was, look at where I'm not at now. I mean, hell, I wouldn't be on with Bailey and Southside in Atlanta if it weren't for Joe Exotic. I mean, these kinds of things have to resonate with you, right? I have had, I've had good and I've had bad, but I don't really focus on the negative. I just focus on the positive and that's how I really look at life. I mean, there's no other way to look at it. I mean, I, I, if you focus on the negative, it's going to drag you down and put you further down there. Who knows where you're going to be? Yeah. What about the rumors of Joe being afraid of tigers? We've heard that come out. It's something we discussed on our show today. <laughs> I mean, I see you laughing. We also agree that we thought it was kind of a – BS as well. I'm like, I don't think the dude's afraid of tigers. I, you and know, you and John, you didn't have a chance to rebuttal because that was from Kirk. Was it Kirkham, right? The the producer, and he yep. was at the end. So I believe we're the first to talk to you after 
episode eight. So you went first and then you got to hear everybody else go. So with Steve's question, that's great. Some of the things that they said, especially about him being afraid of the big cats, did you disagree with any of that stuff? You know, when you're in that industry, you have to have some type of fear of them. But in the beginning, Joe didn't have a fear. But I think after his accidents that he had, uh, the fear was trying beginning to take over. But he was never actually scared of them that I know of. All right, well, tell me this much, because I watched what it had been after one of the accidents. Like, I'll be honest with you. I really thought that that was a girl that had her arm ripped off. I did not know. We've told you, Steve, it's a dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, John Finley, laugh if you want. I thought it was a girl. I really thought it was a girl. I thought it was a girl, too. Nate's the one that got on me and said it was a dude. So is she a girl? Is she a guy? And did it shock you? that either she or he, which you'll answer in a second, went back to work in four days? Um, I'm not sure if I'm really supposed to say this or not, but okay, it is, it is a girl, but it identifies as a guy. Oh, okay. Wow. okay. okay. Nate, is that what you said? Nate, did yeah, you yeah. say that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. tra- she's like transitioning to, to he, right? Okay. Yeah, no. Wrong. Hey, there's okay. not. By the way, there's nothing wrong with it. We're no. just trying to look. Everybody <laughs> seems Tiger King. We're just trying to figure all this stuff out. Okay. We're trying to. We're at. The, we're doing the at-home board game. So, Steve, I'm with you, brother. I, I was curious the same way you were. Okay. Yeah, and you got to realize, John, that you did come across at least you know with the interviews. You see the other owners, the way they behave, and you know you can't trust them. You know, and then, and then, you know, you see what, you know, the, the going back and forth, but you had zero to gain and you were, you were less caught up in it than I think even the younger husband guy. So you became the one person that at least when you spoke and Bailey and I both agree, it was factual. So it's, that's another reason we're probably hitting you with these many questions because you all want to know the truth. I mean, we watched it. We saw it. I just, I just want to know what I saw. You know what I mean? Yeah, going back to the board game we're playing, we're playing Tiger King Clue, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I I was around them for 16 years. Yeah. I, I knew some things that some of the others didn't, and sometimes they knew more than what I did. But it, as far as – Really knowing everything, I don't think everybody does know everything that went on. Did he ever ask you if you would kill Carol Baskin? You know, he joked around it a lot with everybody and pretty much asked jokingly to everybody, just like Rick said, and we all pretty much blew it off. But you were close to Joe where you guys were sharing intimate moments and all that good stuff (laughs) one-on-one. Did he ever turn to you and say, look, honey, I ain't joking. I need you to do it or somebody to do it. No, he never, never really came to me like that. It was just he said something to me and I just went on about it. Yeah. It it looked like he ran his mouth a little bit, like kind of like – over the top, like, I'm going to put your head in a jar. I mean, obviously, I did not think the man was literally going to put her head in a jar. But he did kind of just run his mouth a little bit. And uh, was he just all bark and no bite? Or was there some bite there? Uh, or should I say, uh, was, there, was he all roar and no bite? <laughs> oh, clever, clever. Thank you. I'll, I'll be here. I'll be here for the next 15 minutes, guys. Sorry. Um. You know, he did have a little bit of roar to him, uh, but no, he wasn't all roar. He was more like a little pussy cat than anything. What about uh, the living conditions at the zoo from our side of things? I mean, like, I wanted to Venmo you 20 bucks to get a room at the Red Roof Inn. Uh, were they as bad as they were depicted in, in Tiger King? You know, they were, but 
not everybody's room was. I mean, a lot of, I did house checks and they, some of them just lived that way because that's how they wanted them to live. We could tell them to clean their room and it'd still be that way even after we told them to clean it. What about Eric Cowie? Uh, this is a guy that we all like. I mean, I've got long hair, so obviously I'm a fan. Bailey said again, the, the, you know, to me. I that love he's Eric. Love, love that dude. That dude's awesome. Yeah. Well, he's the real deal, right? I mean, he looked like he was frustrated. His heart was like broken towards the end when the money wasn't there and the animals weren't being taken care of. Was he one guy that got brought into this that kind of knew what the hell he was doing and was straight up? Uh. Eric is pretty much a straight up guy. He's he's gonna tell you how the cow ate the cabbage. I mean, he's he's actually a really good guy until he starts to drink. Oh, well, he said uh, on the episode eight that um, I think he said he's been clean and sober. At least said he's never touched a drug. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong, John. Uh, then he said he's been sober. So is that true? Uh. As far as drugs, I do not know anything about that. I mean, uh, the only time I ever seen him was he was working his ass off. I mean, he he's a really good guy, hard worker. But back when I was around him, he had a problem drinking. But if he's cleaned his act up, we tried to do it before with him. And hopefully he doesn't go back on the wagon now i'm not asking you to out your drug dealer here but you guys were in the middle of nowhere in uh, uh, oklahoma right and you all are doing some type of drug where the hell are you going to get your drugs i don't know that's all joe no, that yeah. had nothing to do with me so joe would bring in what shipments of meth and weed to everybody from where i don't know Bailey, do you not know how many drug uh, uh, guys would love to have a tiger at home? <laughs> yeah, but it's like literally, Steve, they're in the middle of nowhere. You know that. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't have any money, but I'm going to give you this tiger kitten. What are you going to give me? So I mean, how, but, how, how did that work, John? I mean, he's keeping you hopped up on whatever drug of choice you have, but would it be like Tuesday's drug day, like the, the Walmart leftover food days for the tigers? Uh. You know, Oklahoma's filled with a lot of stuff, and there was, you could almost find anything you wanted if you wanted it. But if you're not looking for it, you ain't going to find it. <laughs> yeah. well, hey, one question that's come up, too, and it's a conspiracy. So, again, you being the truthful guy on the show, John, uh, uh -oh. Jeff Lowe, he comes in out of nowhere. I know, starting to laugh already. Mr. Money Man. <laughs> Mr. Whip Jeans, uh, Mr. Flipped Up Hat, and uh, was he or was he not Carol Baskin's one of her husbands? Because he looks, <laughs> he looks a lot like the guy. And did he come in just to take Joe Exotic down? That I don't know. I mean, I think in the beginning it was a genuine friendship, and they had good cause of how they were doing the transition of it and you know in there they're claiming that it was joe's zoo at the time it wasn't it was my zoo mm. Mm. i was in charge of or not in charge but i own the name of gerald wayne interactive zoological park and i dissolved my zoo and joe or jeff opened his zoo and that's how it all really started wait a minute you're you owned the zoo uh yeah jeff did not always or joe did not always own the zoo wow. he was the director and he ran everything even though i was in bed till 12 o'clock or whatever but yeah Jeff ultimately got the zoo from me. Wow. All right. Uh, I'm seeing that. We got to let you go. Um, last question. Simple answer. On a scale of 1 to 10, 
10 being obviously the highest of depict of depicting the realness of the Joe Exotic and all the cast members in the zoo. How real was the Netflix docuseries? Truthful. Uh, as far as what are you talking about? How everything was depicted, or yeah, um, I'd say at least five. Oh, so there's a lot more to the story that we don't know about. Yes. Mm. Wow. So, season. That's what two. I've been saying this whole time. I know. Is there going to be a season two? I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. There I will. won't be a part of it. You won't at all. No. You won't be part of it. Nope. No amount of money that'll get you to come back. Nope. Wow. I mean, Are you? You're John? really taking the high ground. It was great talking with you, John Finley. Absolutely. Good with you. Uh, thank you for coming on. John Finley, Joe Exotic, Tiger King, all that good stuff. Great dude, man. Thanks for your time today. Yes, sir. Thank you.